So this is the microguideway for the coil catheter, and the catheter comes in. And again, the steps are repetitive. The microguideway is removed, and now the coils can be start deployed. So the coils are being deployed. This again depends on the size, the shape, number of coils would depend on that and cost accordingly. So as the aneurysm is tightly packed and so next slide. Thank you. So there are some, yeah, what we call as a, a hydro coils. We have various biodegradable coils. They they basically promote thrombosis, and there is a certain amount of shrinkage of the size of the aneurysm. This is where the problem comes. The problem with the coil is this coil compaction. What looks initially good over a period of time with the pounding of the blood, the coil mass becomes compacted, and then a year or two you see a residual. Mass. That, that slowly, but in principle, this is wonderful. This is probably would replace surgery in most conditions. Yeah, I mean, those are the problems standing. That's why if you're going to put a stent, you need to have uh, what you call, uh, uh, yeah, you have to give antiplatelet agents. So these are the problems. But I think, in principle, this is a wonderful technique, endovascular. Actually, it's a very old technique started in the 60s, but didn't have the technological advances at that time. And now, with new technologies, it's, I mean, it's, it's just fast developing. It's a matter of every year, new, new, new things come. So what was so-called contraindications earlier, now are becoming sort of relative contraindications. And the major hitch is the cost. That's the thing. Yeah, please. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. This is this is uh, giant aneurysm is one of the thing where endovascular techniques are questioned because some people come with mass effect instead of bleed due to a, a giant aneurysm. But what's happened is that they say over a period of time a giant aneurysm thrombosis and it does decrease in size. Does decrease in size. So this is where. Giant aneurysm is one area where people are not very you know, enthusiastic about endovascular technique. But even there, follow-up studies show, say a giant intracavernous carotid aneurysm, they come with a sixth nerve palsy or an ocular palsy. Even there, surgery is out of question. So there we do, and we know that with thrombosis, it does become shrink in size. There is improvement in the extraordinary. 